Good morning and welcome. We begin our time together in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. It's a joy to be here to worship our great God as his people. So please join with me in the call to worship. It is good to praise the Lord and make music to your name, O Most High. For you make me glad by your deeds, O Lord. I sing for joy at the work of your hands. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great King above all gods. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. Amen. Come let us sing for joy to the Lord. Come let us sing for joy to the Lord. Come let us sing for joy to the Lord. Bible reading today comes from Ephesians chapter 1 verses 15 to 23. Ever since I first heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for God's people everywhere, I have not stopped thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight 
so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope he has given to those he called, his holy people who are rich and glorious, who are his rich and glorious inheritance. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead Amen. and seated him in the place of honour at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Amen. Now he is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. Amen. God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. And the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ, who fills all things everywhere with himself. When they were in the field, Cain rose up against his brother Abel and killed him. What causes quarrels and what causes fights among you? Is it not this, that your passions are at war within you? You desire and do not have, so you murder. You covet and cannot obtain, so you fight and quarrel. If you bite and devour one another, watch out that you are not consumed by one another. From the least to the greatest of them, everyone is greedy for unjust gain. From the prophet to the priest, everyone deals falsely. They have healed the wound of my people lightly, saying, Peace, peace, when there is no peace. We look for peace, but no good came. For a time of healing, but behold, terror. The way of peace they have not known. For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. For it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. For we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, for he himself is our peace. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. The second reading comes from Ezekiel, chapter 34, verses 11 to 16 and 20 to 24. For this is what the Sovereign Lord says, I myself will search and find my sheep. I will be like a shepherd looking for his scattered flock. I will find my sheep and rescue them from all the places where they were scattered on that dark and cloudy day. I will bring them back home to their own land of Israel, from among the peoples and nations. I will feed them on the mountains of Israel and by the rivers, and in all the places where people live. Yes, I will give them good pasture land on the high hills of Israel. There, they will lie down in pleasant places and feed in the lush pastures of the hills. I myself will tend my sheep and give them a place to lie down in peace, says the Sovereign Lord. I will search for my lost ones who strayed away and I will bring them safely home again. I will bandage the injured and strengthen the weak but I will destroy those who are fat and powerful. I will feed them, yes, feed them justice. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says, I will surely judge between the fat sheep and the scrawny sheep. For you fat sheep pushed and butted and crowded my sick and hungry flock until you scattered them to distant lands. So, I will rescue my flock and they will no longer be abused. I will judge between one animal of the flock and another and I will set over them one shepherd 
my servant David. He will feed them and be a shepherd to them, and I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David will be a prince among my people. I, the Lord, have spoken. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, Take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not look after me. They also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or needing clothes, or sick or in prison, and did not help you? He will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. We're now going to join in together uh, in a prayer. Open our eyes, Lord, to see as you see and weep as you weep. Open our hearts, Lord, to love the broken and care for those without hope. Open our hands, Lord, to hold what we have lightly and to share cheerfully. Open our mouths, Lord, to speak for the voiceless and to shout for mercy. Open our ears, Lord, 
to the gentle whispers of your spirit and to obey what you say. Open up our lives, Lord, to the call of your voice and the needy cries of the dying. In Jesus' name, Amen. Let's sing this as a prayer in our hearts together. Make me a channel of your peace Where there is hatred, let me bring your love Where there is injury, or pardon, Lord And where there's not true faith in you Make me a channel of your peace where there's despair in life, let me bring hope. Where there is darkness, only light. And where there's sadness, ever joy. Oh, Master, grant that I may never seek so much to be consoled as to console. To be understood as to understand To be loved as to love with all my soul Make me a channel of your peace It is in pardoning that we are pardoned In giving to ourselves that we receive and in dying that we're born to life. Oh, Master, grant that I may never see so much to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love with all my soul. Make me a channel of your peace It is in pardoning that we are pardoned In giving of ourselves that we receive And in dying that we're born to life Shall we start with prayer? Let's pray. Lord God and Heavenly Father, we, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart might be of benefit to us all and that we might be able to respond with, with thanking you and praising you for the word that you have given us in your holy scriptures and in Jesus Christ. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. This last Sunday directs our thoughts to what is to come. Jesus' second coming, the time when Jesus will come to claim his own and to judge all mankind. It's pretty heavy stuff, but I think I might begin on a lighter note. Now, one cold winter's evening, old Paddy had been warming the cockles of his heart with a few ales. Or well, more likely, it was a number of stout Guinness, because he was Irish. So when the publican called time, Paddy was altogether merry on his way home to his long-suffering family. In this befuddled state, Paddy decided to take a shortcut home through the cemetery. As he weaved between the headstones, and that wasn't always to avoid them either, he did not see the hole prepared for the funeral next day. He toppled into the pit and just lay there. He soon fell asleep in this none too salubrious bed. Early the next morning, it was cold and clear. Paddy stirred and stood and was able to look out, out of the open grave. He saw a light, light mist stirring amongst the headstones and was lit by the early morning light of dawn. His eyes opened wide. He looked around again at the headstones and he looked down into his evening's resting place and exclaimed, Hallelujah! It's Resurrection Day and I'm the first one out. 
Paddy had one thing right. Resurrection Day. The final gathering will take place. And this is what today, today's scriptures speak about. So in the time of Ezekiel, that Shana wrote, uh, read to us today, in chapter 34... Ezekiel was proclaiming that the Lord will gather his flock from where they had been scattered. At that time, that was from Babylon. Uh, That was to come where the people of Judah had been exiled. They had been taken away from the promised land. And this prophecy points towards a much greater gathering that will happen when the Lord in all his majesty and might comes to judge the world and everything in it. So look what will happen on this day. So the the sovereign Lord will search for his sheep and look after them. He will rescue them from the places where they have been scattered. This rescue mission will bring the chosen ones of God from every nation and country and will bring them back to the land of their own. For the people of Ezekiel's time, that was to bring them back from where they'd been scattered, bring them back to Israel, back to Jerusalem, and to the land that was their own, the land, the promised land that had been given to Abraham so many centuries before. And this land will be an abundant one. The needs of God's people, uh, his sheep, will be met perfectly. They will have good, rich pasture. It'll be a place of uh, abundance. And in verse 15, we're told, yes, God will tend his people. He will search for lost and bring back the strays. He'll bind up the injured and strengthen the weak. Be sure of one thing. This last gathering will be the result of God's efforts alone. He will search for his own. He will rescue them. He will look after them. When we cast our thoughts to the last day, when Jesus will come to claim his own, we must realise that there is nothing that we can change. There's nothing that we can do to change a single bit of it. God has it all sorted. It will happen according to his will and in his perfect timing. In other words, God has set the agenda and the timetable. Our task is to do nothing but to praise God. But this is not the whole story. This time will also be a time of judgment. The Lord will find the lost and heal the sick. He will also destroy the sleek and the strong. Those amongst the sheep that have have ridden roughshod over the weaker ones uh, to achieve their own ends, they are called the strong and the sleek. And then at this time of judgment, God will... Uh, save his flock and they will no longer be plundered. He will judge between one sheep and another. He will place over them one shepherd. It's called his servant David, harking back to King David, uh, that, that probably the greatest of the Israelites that, are, that, have, that have been known. Now David's been dead for centuries, so Ezekiel is pointing towards, not necessarily backwards to David, but forwards to that son of David, that, uh, that root from Jesse, King David, is pointing to the Messiah, to Jesus the Christ. This dividing of the sheep will take place within the church. We'll, uh, and the question I think it raises for me, will all who call themselves Christians get to heaven? And it appears not. The next question I ask myself is, On what basis will Jesus separate the sheep from the goats? And that's where we move into our next section, which is in Matthew chapter 25, that again we saw on the the video screen. In this chapter, Jesus changes the, the terminology somewhat. He doesn't refer so much to the fat and the lean sheep, but rather the division occurs between the sheep and the goats. Now, apparently, in ancient times, there wasn't much difference between sheep and goats. 
though I've heard it explained, was that selective breeding hadn't taken place and merinos didn't tread the pastures of Israel. But nonetheless, sheep and goats were almost identical. The one difference was that sheep had a tail that curled up, but it might have been curled down, and goats had a tail that curled down, but it might have curled up. Uh, the bloke who explained it to me couldn't remember which way was which, so I've got no hope. But apart from that, there's almost nothing to show the difference between a sheep and a goat. It was one of the shepherd's jobs to remove the goats from the flock. It wasn't necessarily, necessarily easy to spot the difference, and from anyone other than the shepherd, it would be exceedingly difficult. And this is borne out in Jesus' teaching in the Gospel, which I think does echo what is said in Ezekiel. Jesus is speaking about the last day, the final gathering. It will be here that God's people from all nations will be separated one from the other in, in the same way that a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. These people before, before the throne of the king will outwardly appear very similar. They are, after all, all part of the church. But on the inside, they are different. And it's on the inside that God looks. He looks at the heart and discerns what is true. Now, Jesus uses six criteria to highlight the differences between sheep, those who are blessed by the Father and will come to, in, to an inheritance prepared for them since the, uh, the creation of the world, between the sheep and the goats, the goats are those who are cursed and will be sent to eternal fire. Jesus personalises these, these criteria by putting himself in the place of the vulnerable and the lost. What a believer does for one of these, he also does for Jesus. By the same token, when one denies the vulnerable and the lost and denies what they need, then he is denying Jesus. So what are these six criteria? They basically come down to uh, loving others in need, who are vulnerable, by giving them something to eat, giving them something to drink, inviting the stranger in or showing hospitality, clothing them, looking after the sick and visiting the prisoner. And over the centuries, the Christian church, I think, has been active in doing all of these things. Sometimes better, sometimes not so well. And uh, I think in today's day and age, there are lots of different service agencies that the church have developed. I think the, the Lutheran have one. I keep on trying to remember it. The Lutheran services, that's part of it. There's Anglicare, Baptist Care, Uniting Care, Salvation Army. Is the, the whole purpose there is for service in, in many ways. And they're all there. We've been doing that, but I would suggest that these actions do not stop at meeting other people's physical needs. One of the tasks of the believer, one of my obligations, I think, is to meet the spiritual needs of my brother and sisters in Christ. This being the case, as a, believing, a believer in Christ, how do I give them something to eat and drink? or particularly if they're hungering and thirsting after righteousness, what can I do to assist them in finding that? If they have come to the realisation that they are the enemy, that they are an enemy of God and they fall short of their design potential, then I should be able to point them to the way to the bread of life and to the living water, to Jesus Christ himself who through his death on the cross has paid the penalty for our rebellion and has turned aside God's wrath, enabling us to come into his presence. And that is where they find Christ in his righteousness and he is able to give them his righteousness through faith, through their faith in him. I mustn't keep this knowledge to myself. Rather, it is a message that is of value to everyone I know, to those I know and to those I don't yet know, to strangers. I am to be active in sharing my faith with both friends 
and with strangers, inviting them in to the knowledge that I have of Jesus Christ and in how to worship him. How do I clothe the spiritually naked? What are the spiritually naked? Perhaps they're those who are vulnerable to the pressures of this world and are borne down under its weight. Again, by my word and example, I can best encourage the spiritually naked by pointing them to Jesus. And the one text that immediately springs to mind, and it's always in the AV, the authorised version, Come to me, all ye that labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. How do I help the spiritually sick? I think there's only one way to help them, and that is to assure them that God has forgiven them and that they can forgive others. I've heard from different places that forgiving others not only heals my soul, but also may heal my body. Bitterness that is bred by unforgiveness is like a deadly poison. The only antidote is to know God's forgiveness and in turn to forgive others. What about those in, in prison spiritually? Are they the ones who know no peace? How do you break the sh- these shackles of spiritual imprisonment? You may be able to fathom all mysteries and all knowledge. Your faith may be enough to move mountains, but if you don't have love, then you have nothing. It is by loving others that a believer finds that peace that transcends all understanding. Who are the sheep? Those who look after the spiritual and physical needs of others. Who are the goats? They may look the part, but their faith is only skin deep. Skin deep. It has no substance. In short, in his letter to the Ephesians, Paul summarises the differences between sheep and goats. And if you listen to exactly what Fred said, then I'll, I'll say ditto. <laughs> he must have read my message. Paul didn't stop giving thanks for the believers in Ephesus, but he remembered in the, them in their prayers when he had heard about their faith in the Lord Jesus and their love for all the saints. The faith and love of the Ephesians must have been outstanding because the news got all the way back to Paul in Rome which just goes to show you that the grapevine is a much more effective, much more effective in communicating than social media. When believers put their faith into action, people notice, and it identifies them as Jesus' disciples. So what does this all mean? How should we live our lives knowing that Jesus will return and separate the sheep from the goats? One of the reactions from the people who are listening to Jesus was that both the sheep and the goats were surprised to hear the judgment of the king. The sheep asked, When did we do all these things? The goats asked, When didn't we do all these things? They were both surprised to hear what was going to happen. Loving in the way Jesus describes it isn't an action that you can resolve to discipline yourself to do. If you do, then your loving will ebb and flow along with your ups and downs. It will become an onerous task. Rather, loving others is the result of the faithful, spirit-filled lifestyle, where it becomes second nature to love others and to put them and their interests first. And it will be a surprise when someone mentions it. Believers have been gifted with faith, being convinced that God will keep his promises and they have been given the exemplar of faith, Jesus Christ, who lived and died and lived again to serve others. He is our model and our guide, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. With faith firmly founded on the inside and generously expressed in how we relate to others on the outside, we will be prepared when the for the day when God, Father, Son and Spirit, gathers believers from around the world to look after them, to draw them to himself, but also to judge them. Remember, he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, we are the flock under his care, and he will do what he has promised. Amen.
Let's spend some time in prayer. I pray for you constantly, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and understanding so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. Heavenly Father, we ask for your wisdom to discern your ways and path for our own lives. We ask for your wisdom to discern how to deal with others we meet, live with, work with, shop with, share our roads with, wait in line with, eat with, and be with daily. We ask for your wisdom in difficult situations we, have, we may have to deal with as we go through life. We ask for your wisdom in dealing with the injustices in our world. We ask for wisdom for our leaders in our world, our countries, our states and our communities. We ask for wisdom for our church leaders, worldwide and local. We ask for wisdom for our pastors as they preach your word, We ask for your wisdom as we reach out to those in need in our communities and in our world. We ask for wisdom as we minister to those who are homebound and in nursing homes. We ask for your wisdom as we minister to those in hospitals and who are bedridden. We ask for your wisdom that not only enlightens us, but transforms us and guides us in our daily walk with you. Amen. Father, we pray for those um, who are on our baptised list. Travis Lewis, Jade Fangmeyer, Daniel Markson, Erin Markson, Eric Hammer and Alexander Stats. Father, we don't know where these people are at in their faith journey, but we pray that wherever they are, that you would reach out and touch them with your love and peace and that they would lift their eyes to you as their saviour. We pray again for those in our congregation that are dealing with health and other issues. We think of Pam Fawkes and Denise Sanka. Barbara Mills and Shahil, please continue to work in their lives to bring about good health and many blessings. Father, your church awaits the day when the Son of Man will come in his glory and the angels with him and he will sit on his royal throne. Until that day, when we will be received as your blessed people. Keep us safe in your care. Make us merciful, serving your Son now as he comes to us in those in need. We ask this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As we leave today, we have the opportunity to worship God with our free will gifts. So I invite you to um, pray the offering prayer with me. Thank you, Father, for making us yours and caring for us as a good shepherd cares for the sheep. Help us to recognise Jesus in those who are poor and needy and serve him humbly with what you have given us by serving them. Amen. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Spirit washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior.
Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending, bring from above echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. Savior, I'm happy and blessed Watching and waiting, looking above Filled with His goodness, lost in His love This is my story, this is my song Praising my Savior This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Go now to love in Jesus' name, speak in his name and care in his name with willingness to touch the outcast, feed the hungry, remember the sick, visit the imprisoned, clothe the naked and give water to the thirsty in Jesus' name. God give you a place of rest on rich pasture. Christ Jesus be the shepherd king who binds your wounds and Holy Spirit give you wisdom and reveal to you the fullness of the one who fills all in all. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.